working. Uh, how is everyone? How are you guys? Morning, precious. Morning. Morning. Uh, we are good. And how are you? Good, good. We have um, a two hours uh, for our group session. This is group session number two. So the agenda is pretty simple. One, each of you will share your notes, what you have learned and what you are stuck with. And the others will make notes of those areas. They update their notes. And then uh, we will, I will then, uh, as I'm hearing you, direct you in helping you to prioritize, but also talk about the templates and the checklist that is going to help you to implement uh, the stuff. And uh, then we will then talk about um, other areas that you have found maybe content difficult to read, but also ways and system to make it easier on you. We will then uh, go through the assignment, uh, those who have not done the assignment, yeah? <laughs> and then uh, those who have done the assignment, then they will do the corrections also just to see. And, uh, and yeah, and I will share my experience too on the areas I've stumbled on. So that's the agenda for today. But the most important thing, get your notes, make sure you are able to listen very closely to your colleagues, because what you, you are doing, you are listening to what they have learned so that you can add it on your notes and, and the action. And then we then talk about how you're going to implement the things that needs to be worked on. Is that all good? It's all good, all clear. Okay, just be reminded we yeah. are recording and we have a permission to get you recorded and we'll be posting this on YouTube for those that might have ESCOM issues and so on. So, but also for you to listen to it over time, if there's anything that maybe you think you have forgotten, that's the papers for today, right? Great, uh, let's check in. Uh, how are we doing? Uh, how it has been since you started? Um, what are your lessons? What are you learning? What are the realization? Is there stuff that is difficult for you to comprehend? Uh, let's keep starting. Remember the purpose of a group session is so that we can engage more, is so that I can begin to see which areas you are stuck in. I uh, will start with uh, Lindelani. Oh, hi, Precious. Hello, Babanjan. Hi, Simulin. Welcome, Gabupulin Delan. Um, Zoom code. Oh, you know, I'm going, 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 I've been actually following you since 2016. Um, I remember when you were still facilitating uh, AMA workshops at uh, APSA Center of Entrepreneurship in uh, town. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing exactly the same. <laughs> 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 so you didn't get enough. You wanted more. You wanted more. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I had to travel from Pretoria to to, to your to town. town. Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely to meet you, Lindeland. I probably know your face, but we used to get quite a lot of people there, and yeah. I know. Absa was one of my biggest supporters, and yeah, so <laughs> thank you. Lovely to meet you again. So, uh, what are you catching up? You have been in these classes before. So, what is new? What 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 is a different thinking now? Uh, and uh, what is working for you? What is not working? Yeah. So. Uh um, there are quite a lot of things that, um, you know, it, it depends on the stage of the business, especially for us, because we are in agri-tech business. 
So, um, so currently, what is working for us to from, from these particular modules um, is to actually learn more about the compliance part because as startup businesses, some of us, we don't have uh, enough staff to employ who can take care of the administration part. So you end up being the person who is um, a, a jack of all trades. You are supposed to go to the, 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 the clients looking for negotiations and seal the deals. At the same time, you forget that you still need to comply, more especially when it comes to taxes. So I've, I, I'm still learning a lot in terms of the taxes because um, so what, what I've realized, maybe it's, it's also good to have mentors because what I've realized is that I've been running away to work with the government because Bengi uh, Jelobuti, working with the government uh, is through tendering system, which I don't like because of corruptions and all of those things. But Futuguti, the compliance when it comes to um, taxes and all these things and flagrancies and SRs is very important because you are at a good state as a business. So it's not something until you have mastered it because you have learned it before. And now what I've I did not know when I precious Uti. Um, for for me as a state as a startup, how much must I have to say now I'm, I'm a, I must be able to pay SARS some tax like the 28% that you've mm. spoken about? Mm. Yes, because it was difficult for us to say if I'm making about 300,000 um, as a sales, does SARS take from mm. sales or from the profit? So I think I still need, because this is a, 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 a group session now, maybe if you can also clarify for me, are they actually taking from the profit and how much is uh, the profit if I'm putting each generator as a startup for me to be able to pay SARS the 28%? Um, is it uh, you did mention that it is annually, but I did not know exactly what it again makes some zero if I'm making about 1.2 million per annum, which is um, AMA sales, and then after all the deductions, maybe in salary 200,000. So, where does sales come in when it comes to those things? So, is or isn't uh, Especially in terms of complying and because it's cut this thing, you see, I believe it is ours because see, Chelubuti, see, I see that and see the motion. So, yeah, is it any fun? Is it any fun? They are cool, but the other modules that we have um, uh, facilitated are because we are going to get issues that follow each other. But when it comes to taxes, I'm still confused a little bit. I unga warige in the line. That's a point of having a group session because then it sort of drill it down to that. Thank you so much for sharing that, and it's good to have you. Um, and then who's next? Uh, any volunteers next? Okay, Pamel. Awesome morning, precious morning, everybody. Ekupini. It's nice to see you, precious, feeling much better. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> man, I felt sorry for you. I was like, oh, but yeah, you stuck through it. Uh, so good on you for that. Thank you. Okay, so firstly, before I say anything, I just want to be to say that I'm so grateful for this opportunity uh, as a small business owner. Um, I've never really had a coaching session with anybody. Um, so, um, yeah just a bit about myself and my company. So we provide accounting tax and payroll services. So I'm an accountant. I want to be like you when I grow up. So it's <laughs> great <laughs> to meet you <laughs> officially. <laughs> 
So um, with regards to the session, because it was compliant, something that I'm, I'm very uh, comfortable and familiar with, um, it was just a, a, a awesome reminder, but my biggest takeaway, biggest, which I started implementing immediately, was the importance of having contracts and written down in place with, let's say, um, I'll give you an example. So as an accountant, I do work with other accountants on areas that uh, we don't specialize in. So Tina, we, we specialize in PTY LTDs, ne? that's our area. So isn't this fun and individuals or if uh, a company has in the imports and exports, that's not our area of expertise. So I work with other accountants on that, but we've never really had anything in writing. So after the, the session we had, I was like, okay, I need to get my templates and let's make sure that we have something in writing because you never know what the future holds. So, so far that has been my biggest takeaway and I am definitely making uh, use of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pamela, for sharing. And um, yeah, I, I, I think what, what you're gonna learn is what not to do. <laughs> Yes. Oh Lord, I've made so many mistakes. I mm. will share some of those mistakes here. Oh, guys, like big boo-boos. <laughs> but thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay. Um, I will then uh, move to uh Boitu. Boitu Melo, please come through. What have you learned? What is sitting on your notes? What is your to-do list? Which areas you're struggling with? Sure. We have 10 hours. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Only two, but you know what? <laughs> we can move on. Uh -huh. um, I, I, learned, I learned a lot in regards to, you know, my obligations as the company owner, self-appointed director, and um, how to differentiate myself as a director and as a shareholder, because um I, I was not aware of that and you know having been running the company okay let me just give a background so the company was started in 2015 it was a partnership between friends um but due to you know the risks that were not shared the partnership uh, fell off and um i got into another partnership again it also fell off um 2017, then I went solo and started the company. So to date, I've been running the company solo. And I think I've had the most, I've been fearful of even looking at partners because of my previous experience to, of, of, of you know, the, the other partnerships failing that I've been running things on my own, you know? And even when I, I feel like, you know what, I actually need help because I feel like this is, this is sort of above me uh, or above the knowledge that I currently have. And one thing that I've, uh, you know, I've been listening over and over to, I've been listening to the book, the audio book. What I've been listening over and over to is the fact that, um, you know, if the company is not growing, it's because, you know, the owner is not growing. And I, I believe I've been in this frustrated mode of mm -hmm. what can I do now? I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, there is, there's, there's things that I see are attainable, but I cannot reach them. Um, because it's either it's human resource issues or, you know, I get people, you train them, they leave and all of that. So me understanding my obligations from the point of being director, the employee of the company, and that I can actually even get other people um, to come in without being scared of, you know, the impact that they're going to have in the business. And also, you know, when you, when you, when you explain, I think there's a lady who was... Um, you know, who wanted, who had different people, uh, you know, assisting in the business and where to place them that you can have those people on contractual basis. You don't have to make them shareholders. And those that are interested in being shareholders, you must know what rights you're giving to them. And you don't necessarily have to give them like 100% of your company, uh, of the shares, but you can look at what contribution are they bringing in and have those shares with them and, and understand each other in terms of how they're going to support the business. So because, because of the role, um, that I've been playing, having started the company and having been the, the original only employee of the company, then when you add other people, you know, the things that you struggle with, like I even asked last week, what are the profiles of those people? What are they going to say they're doing? 
you know, what's the job profile and, and how you explained it to me to say whatever that it is that they're doing, you can even add on to it. I've had contracts, yes. I've drafted contracts, but it was just always, what are they doing exactly? Are they taking, am I trying to get them to take the duties that I'm doing mm -hmm. uh, that I started the company with or do I add other things that they cannot, that they can, I, I mean, they, that I cannot do Mm -hmm. uh, just to free my hands or what is it that I'm doing with them so those were some of the highlights and things to look at to say um, what exactly are this new uh, I mean the additional staff uh, assisting me with so that's one of the things that I started I had actually implemented so when we when when you spoke about it it allowed me a chance to say now let me define uh, the contract so that somebody's also aware of what are their responsibilities and at the same time, um, being able to work at working myself, you know, my exit strategy in the business, because I realized that um, the business cannot survive without me. Like literally, sixty uh, <laughs> percent of it cannot survive without me. There are things that they can do without me, but sixty percent of the work uh, it's on my shoulders. And how do I then, you know, formulate? Uh, an exit strategy where the business can survive whether I'm there or not. Yes, I have started doing the systems. I haven't been consistent. And th that's one of the things that I've heard you, you know, talk about even in the book, to say create systems. I had created, I have, I have started doing that. And I see how, how beneficial that is, you know, like I'm saying 40% still can run without me being there. Um, Yo, there's a lot that I learned. I mean, how much did I learn? The um, uh, MOIs, which I never understood what they're all about. Um, I learned something. I am, uh, Dumi, you, 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 you got muted and it's not me uh, while you were talking. <laughs> Dumi, unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Um, I think there was a call coming in. Sorry, can you hear oh, me? Oh yes, we are using the phone to yes, connect. Yes, yes. I'm using my phone to connect. <laughs> it mutes the the app, and then uh, you think we can't hear you. Okay, we lost you when you were saying you have been learning a lot. The MOIs. Uh, I think you were still mentioning other things. Yes. So um, you you put everything so plainly, and with its description, especially, uh, you know, the, U, the UIF 19 um, and the, um, the EMP, EMP, is it 101? Oh, where am I? Yes, I was not. A... Don't worry. So the first one, the MP 101 is when you are registering as an employer. And then the MP 201 is when you are submitting the monthly returns. And then the MP 501 every six months. And then the RP 5 is once a year. Okay, I have that on my note. And then the UIF 19, I was not aware that that's, that's what it's called. Actually, we do have, um, I'm part of a program with Black Umbrellas. So they afford us. Um, the services of, of accountants. So they do our monthly um, account, uh, account management and they also do the payroll. So because, no. you know, yeah, so I was not, I was not really paying attention. Let me just, okay. let me just be honest. But I was just no, not paying attention. Hang on, yeah. my dear, hang on. Yes, there are people who are doing the stuff, but guess what? If those people don't do the job right, Whose head is it on the line? Mine. Okay, good. Yes. So it's you don't need to know <laughs> the nitty gritties, but you need to know what gets done, when it needs to yeah. get done to provide supervision so that you can check up on these accountants because I mean, the stories I've heard of accountants submitting things late, client even ending up with penalties. So, which means by the fifth, you should be checking accountant, the EPMP201, so and so by this time, do you understand what I mean? So you still need to provide supervisory because when things go and hit the, the fence, hey, hey, when on the line? Good, so continue. Uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is 
here's this this lady assist us every month. She does send uh, the declarations, but I was I was just okay. They're helping us. I was just so ignorant. I just want to be, you know, honest. I was just so ignorant to what she's doing. But yes, monthly without fail, she does send us um, the declarations from UIF, and we pay. We do pay it. I do pay it every month. But I was not aware what what are these forms called? You know, what is she doing? And when you explained it to say this is filed every month, it must be paid before the seventh. Oh, now it made, you know, it gave me perspective. Now it gave me content to say, okay, this is what this is for. Uh, yes, I knew we pay in UIF, but I, I didn't know what she's doing. She just sends the emails and uh, UIF will reply to on my email as well to say that, you know, some things have been filed. But then now that, you know, all this was explained to me, I have now, uh, you know, my eyes are now opened about it. And talking about accountants, I've been struggling with, with uh, uh, from the beginning, let me just say from the beginning of me getting, um, you know, uh, what's this, uh, Sarah's um, clearance, uh, it's been done by other people. Mm. So I've okay. never done it myself to a point whereby now when these um, accountants needed to take over the ones that we're currently using now, it was a problem because I didn't have a profile. I, so it, I had issues with opening even a profile. So mm -hmm. that's this thing as now. I, I don't even have a clearance as I'm speaking now because we've been trying to fix this whole thing. Until, until when we had our first session, I went to SARS. I think it was, was it last week? Yes, I went to SARS and uh, I just wanted to find out what, why, what, why is it taking so long? Because we've been sub submitting things and submitting things but nothing is happening. And they, you know, just being there physically myself, it actually moved and helped a lot of things and having logging a call to do it because they've been, they've been submitting, but nothing is happening. You know, they've been submitting my information, but nothing was happening. So you explaining a lot of all these things and me being, uh, going to SARS and getting a little bit of information on it has also, also even opened my eyes because in all honesty, we do, we do start businesses, you know, uh, you you quick to to have your name on the business. Um, you quick to do all those things and you start running and all those things. But we don't really uh, check these things out um, and you know follow uh, you know the right way of doing it. You know complying the right way. Um, so those are some of the things that I've started immediately to say. You know what? I need to have these things in place. So I'm saying I started with the contract. And then I'm following the SARS thing. And uh, now I know what you know, the UIF, UIF uh, uh, submissions are done every month. I'm aware of it now. What I was confused about and you explained was the COEDA. I always thought that you must be having a lot of employees to do that. So now that you explain that as long as you have people working for you and you know the type of environment that you have, you can you know, register them, which that would be my next step. Um, let me stop because I'll take another 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We were all making the notes, entrepreneurs, right? The stuff she was mentioning, even if it was not on our notes, right? Okay, I'm going to move to Zaziwe. Uh, go ahead, Zaziwe. We're just sharing our notes, what we have been learning and understanding. Thank you so much, Boitu. Uh, Zaziwe? Hi, Sis Precious. Hi, everyone. Um, on my side, uh, I was, I'm feeling a bit intimidated, reason being, <laughs> I, I regard myself as an amateur because <laughs> I haven't received any income in my business. So I battle to reflect Although I'm learning about the compliance as an employee, employee, and I realize that I've been cheated on. For example, you guys just mentioned COIDA. That for me was not applicable on my payslip. And I've been having so many aha moments. Uh, for example, on the example that you did on the M201. Um, so I don't know whether it's based on lack of knowledge or ignorance. But then I'm grateful for this opportunity, reason being, um, I think I had opened up a business for the wrong reasons. So I'm learning so many things that I am not supposed to do. 
where I'm stumbling, where things are a bit blurry, I could say it's mostly text. For, I mean, yeah, it's mostly text for me. Um, I still require more practicals on that. And yeah, that's, that's, that's about it from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Azure. So right now, because you haven't uh, experienced much in your business, it's gonna feel like it's a theory, but it's really practical. But what I appreciate is that at least you know, you know, others have made mistakes on this, like Moti was explaining you will at least be aware so that you then know what to do, right? Indeed. Okay, good. Um, Sipelele, notes? Yes, good morning, I'm here. Hi Spelele, we're sharing notes on what we have learned and what is on our action list and what we are stuck on. Right, good morning to you, uh, Sis Precious and the team. Um, so a, a bit of uh, background, I've, I've been uh, trying to get off the ground um, a construction business uh, that was registered in November, 2014. But the truth of the matter is that it's been a very uh, unsuccessful, I'd say, unsuccessful, right? Mainly because the, the business, the nature of the business is mostly, uh, the success here yeah, is mostly dependent on, on tenders, you know? Uh, even when it comes to uh, subcontracting work, there's a bidding process and, and whatnot. So I haven't been very lucky there. But what I've been intentional about doing is uh, capacitating myself because as much as there's nothing to write home about at the moment, um, I know that I'm not running a spaza shop. <clears throat> and so I will not uh, uh, take a spaza shop mentality to, towards the business and growing the business and capacitating myself um, <clears throat> for that. Uh, I've been through, well, I'm in an incubator program with the CDAP, you know, but the, I think it, it also matters, uh, Ugoti, who's running your program and do they have the experience and the, have they seen the challenges that you are facing? Because then that, that would determine how well they drive that program and they give you the things that you actually need instead of just providing and support in terms of um, compliance. So I'm compliant in terms of paperwork. You do these, these some of these uh, compliance documents um, every year, some every two years, some every three years, you know, you know, depending on the sector that you're in. So, so, I'm, so I also joined this um, uh, uh, Build to Last program because like I said, I'm intentional about capacitating myself. So because, of, because I, I understand what the, the challenge is, or I have an, an understanding of the challenge in my business, and it's mainly to secure work. Um, I've, I've worked in the construction industry as an employee, so I understand the job, I understand the, you know, what, what, needs, what needs to be done technically in terms of executing the various projects but the business uh, experience that I don't have. So what am I doing currently? <clears throat> um, I'm still, you know, on that uh, wave of becoming, of, you know, maintaining compliance with SARS, with COIDA, you know, those are the typical uh, documentation that, uh, that you need to have in place in terms of compliance and all the others. So I'm quite, uh, I'm quite compliant in terms of that. But what I've uh, identified is an opportunity now to team up with um, a company that does manufacturing. Uh, they call them they call themselves EcoPanel. So what they do is they there's what we call um, innovative building technology or uh, alternative building technology. So where 
as opposed to an RDP house that would take three weeks to a month to complete, we would uh, install panels uh, that take about, uh, to complete a whole house is about eight hours. So in one day, you can complete a house and the family can move in the very next day, if not the same day. So it's, it's technology that's being used in South Africa, just not as much as the, the conventional brick and mortar. So I'm working currently on uh, the land application with the Richards Bay uh, Industrial Development Zone, such that uh, I can partner with these guys so we can set up manufacturing um, in one of the those special economic zones that the RBIDZ uh, provides. So I'm busy with that at the moment, and I'm looking to use whatever you know courses I've attended and uh, business sessions and all that, all that information and knowledge. I'm looking to use that. <clears throat> excuse me with that new venture that I'm working on right now, not that I'm abandoning construction, but in reality, construction needs for you to be more than just compliant. Uh, you need to pay people so that you get work. You know, that's how you, you get work now. If you don't have money to pay people upfront, you don't get work, that's the reality. And that's what Uputuli uh, Ndelani uh, was saying, but he was avoiding government precisely for that reason. So that's what I'm looking to do now. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can so that I am best prepared for that venture. Because if you, if you go to a negotiation table and propose partnership, you can't be clueless and not have anything you bring to the table. So basically, yeah, that's what I'm, um, I'm busy with at the moment while I'm still doing the uh, the pursuits for for construction work, uh, et cetera. But I'm hoping that at some point um, we'll be able to merge the skills of the two companies and see how we can work together. Um, I've got other plans, you know, but they are still at a um, dreaming level. <laughs> They're not something that I can execute at the moment because a lot of them need a lot of capital lots lots of lots of capital to be able to to take off so yeah that's where i'm at i'll stop there for now uh, see pelele thank you for sharing um i, I just want to make sure it's, uh, con there is potential conflict of interest because i am we are doing a feasibility study on similar things so I just hope, yeah, one day you don't come at me. She stole my idea. <laughs> so, and I'm in an incubation with Nigel. I don't know if you know Nigel. Um, no. Uh, Nigel, he has an incubation at three years uh, with okay. me and uh, about uh, another about 50 entrepreneurs in, in property development space, basically. I see. Okay. Uh, where uh, the, these issues and also these projects are relating to innovative, um, uh, uh, to innovative in, in this industry, especially mm -hmm. with what has happened with um, uh, the floods. Yeah. And plus also UJ is doing a few more uh, 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 demos right now on the same space. Uh, so yeah, it's a space that I think it does need for us to establish solid uh, on the ground in terms of viable environment and also then start building up the people within the ecosystem who are then gonna fund these homes that will be built with this innovation. But uh, the, the technology is already there, it's just mm. now maybe getting the accreditation uh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that was my declaration of interest. So I like, <laughs> didn't even know that you were doing that, but yeah, maybe one day we'll share notes. Okay, that would be great. Great. Okay. Uh, who? Uh, okay. So, um, who else? Especially, okay. Yes. Sorry, before you proceed, Nick. Um, yes. can you please maybe in this session or maybe at the end or something, just just so that I don't forget. Can you mention the? I I hear you mention UJ a lot. 
can you mention the program that they had that they have there? I heard something about it, but I'm not sure. Uh, can you mention the program that they have there? Uh, the name of the program. No, the I name was and what is it that they do? Oh, so UJ is doing um, a demo on building a house uh, using the new technology. Um, I will find the link and share that with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Great. Um, okay, Dr. Julia Pentla, please come through and then we'll go to Mantle and then Maggie. Please Good come. morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. What's his um, good morning. What is what sorry? What is on your notes and which areas have you been struggling with? Oh, okay. To maneuver on the, on the um, no, um th th thank you so much, uh, precious. I think it's um it's just great to be on this platform. I think I I I subscribe to your um whether it's a link and whatnot, and I saw this pop up and I took a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I saw that it said I successfully uh, won a training program. Um, but anyway, um, it's great to be on the program. I think for me, um, it is mainly to refresh um, my memory, um, you know, of when I started. Um, I'm not a novice. I had somebody say they are novice. Um, I've been in the business, um, in the construction industry to be quite precise for over 12 years. So um, I, I, I think for me, the take out um, has to do with, um, you know, the, the duties of a director because it's, it's so important. Um, and I think oftentimes we get bottled in the operations of the organization and we forget really um, why we're there as the directors and what our responsibilities are towards the organization. Um, you know, there's something that you, you, you spoke about that I would want to pick your brain because you made mention that the company is a legal um, 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 entity separate from um, you know, you as an individual, but there was a there was a case um, recently where the magistrate ruled that um, the law does no longer exonerate the 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 director in his personal capacity if he does not meet certain um, obligations. Um, you know, they can um, come and um, you know um, at, he, he he can be liable. You know whether they come and attack him to move his goods and so on and so forth, that he becomes liable. And I, I thought that it's something that the, the magistrate said it's a new law. And I thought that it's something that I would, when we have these caution sessions, I would want you to uh, perhaps um, clarify. Um, you know that that is the case. Um, yeah. So for me, to be quite um, honest with you, um, it's. It feels good to be on this program. I saw some someone said it, it, earlier on that um, you know if the company is not growing, it means um, you as the director you are not growing. And for me to be quite honest with you, I've got a very different um, experience. <laughs> I grew faster than my organization, and I always struggle because um, because of the nature of the person I am. I I just yeah, I've grown uh, more than uh, my, 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 my business. And when I say my business, that it also includes the employees and it's very difficult to, to bridge the gap, um, you, you know, because as I grow, because I'm growing faster, um, they're not able, it's not an organic growth. So they're not able to catch up with me. Then you see that the, the, the gap is wide and you need to bring in someone that can close the gap and, and so on and so forth. So that's, um, to be quite frank with you, my, my challenges. But one, one thing that was also uh, uh, mentioned um, about systems, it's quite important. Um, I know that um, in the growing phase of my business, I was literally the business. Um, and it, every time uh, my employees had to make, to do something, they'd have to make a reference and not the organization, me. Um, they will name drop and 
um, things change or things move and it's very bad for business uh, because um, you become when you become the business uh, when you are not there the business suffer um, greatly but when you put in place systems anyone anywhere can just follow the system and all the system goes really so yeah um, thank you so much for the opportunity perfect thank you my for that thoughts. question and that note um Moachi, am i pronouncing your name correct yes 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 okay so super thank you precious thanks morning guys okay so thank you guys for this opportunity i'm learning a lot <laughs> and yeah i think this is the great time and the right time for my business where it's at currently. So I run a payroll and HR business called Moaki Payroll Services. I also do on the side, the Airbnb, which I started recently and Uber for Women, but on a day-to-day basis it's it's a payroll business and i was running i've been running this business from 2017 and was <clears throat> running it under sage because i used their software and they were i was on their database and they were sending me to clients and i was consulting under them and not um and forgetting that I'm running my business and not stage business. Mm. I think I, <laughs> I realized late last year when during COVID actually, but late last year when they couldn't send me now to clients anymore and they were now um, didn't have, because clients were cutting costs during COVID and clients were retrenching. So it was just a matter of, no, we don't need a payroll uh, person. No, they're costing us so much. And Sage was like, okay, we are dissolving that um, department and we can't send you to clients anymore. Mm. And then I realized that, okay, <laughs> I'm stuck now because I could not get a single client by myself. So, um, I then started to struggle finding clients and all that, which I'm still <laughs> struggling. And I got into this program and I think it's going to help me to actually help me to run my business properly, like, a, like an entrepreneur, which it was something that I did not do when I started because I was just like too busy with Sage and forgetting that, okay, I'm actually building something here for myself and for my future. So I'm here to learn that. It's the hard way, I know, <laughs> but yeah. So when you said, I think what uh, what I remember, when you said separate yourself from the business as a director, draw salary from the business. So such things, uh, 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 it's something that I was not even, considering or thinking about, but I've learned that. And I've learned that when you said that, um, learn to run your business properly um, and not like a spaza shop, like Spelele said. So I was just running, I think my business like a spaza shop, like I said, that I was not actually running my business. I think I would say that. So I would have a client who would, <laughs> I see you spelling. <laughs> so I'd have a client, like right now, I'm struggling with clients who are not paying me um, on a month to month basis because I, I never used to, um, when I was working with Sage, I, I never used to care about whether um, my clients are paying me or not because mm -hmm. I was not, they would like pay me after six months, I wouldn't care and I would continue because maybe I was concentrating on the clients that I was running with Sage and not the clients that I'm running on independently on my site. Mm -hmm. And now when I say, no, but you, we have to, you have to pay me. 
I, I, I restructured so my clients in the beginning of the year that, okay, this is how we're going to work. And this is, I haven't increased my, my prices for like maybe since 2017, since we started with some of those clients. And then this year, because things hit me that, okay, you need to wake up. This is a business, this is not a casa shop. And when I started to place things into place, and then they were like, but we, we can't work like that. We haven't been working like that. And we started having problems. So yeah, I'm here to learn so many things. And so far I've learned those things. No problem. Thank you, Sir and Rafi. We will cover some of those messages. Some who might not be able to cover everything, but throughout the program, if you still feel you need additional action, just come back to me. There seems to be a lot. I was making the notes as we were discussing. Um, but I wanna uh, just start from the side on uh, the difference between sales and, um, and, and profit on what Ulindelani was talking about. So Yvette is gonna focus on the sales, okay? Because we're a vet vendor. It's at the sales, but at the transaction level. Whereas it takes income tax, income tax, it has a profit. Okay, now your question was also how much on the profit? So it ranges between zero up to 28%. 28% is the maximum. So it depends on the taxpayer, if they are small business and when, if they are small business, there are specific conditions, about five or six conditions, which are on your notes. If you are not qualifying for small business, then it will be corporate, which will then be a straight 28%. So that is for income tax. But when we're doing the calculation for income tax, we say gross income, which is your sales, uh, and then exemption, if the exemptions apply. Exemptions is things that um, uh, are not classified as a gross income. In terms of the legislation, your accountant or your tax practitioner will be able to pick those up. And then less deduction. A uh, deduction is all these expenses that you have incurred. In our example that we did uh, on the session, it will be the files, right? And then uh, that will then give you taxable income, which is now uh, your profit. Just remember also that the, the, the use of words, the accountants, are not necessarily the same. Uh, there's four types of accountants, financial accountant, tense accountant, management accountant, cost accountant. So they use these words in different names, but they mean the same thing. So when I talk about gross income, I'm talking about turnover, I'm talking about sales, right? When I'm talking about deduction, I'm talking about expenses, I'm talking about the expenditure, I'm talking about uh, the expenses that you had actually incurred. So it's just a, a, a different use in in, 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 in how we, we translate them based on them, on where we are basing our explanation on. So for tax, it will be a legislation. So the legislation say gross income, it does not say turnover, right? Uh, whereas a turnover or revenue is what is also sitting on the financial accounting standards. So just, but I will cover this in more detail later in module seven, okay? Okay. Okay, so don't, don't get too mind bogged, but uh, this uh, uh, Linda Line is talking then to, to, to that in uh, building, um, into the difference between sales and profit, but also how much of that profit, but how do we calculate that profit? Okay, in your modules, there is examples, but also even the table that is showing you how this practically would look like. 
And then I uh, noted on uh, Pamela putting the contracts in place, but I also want to just talk it be going back to what Marty is raising, that when she started trying to put those systems in, the clients were not happy or people were not happy. The reason why they were not happy is because things were running at their benefits, not at your benefits. You see, when people take advantage of you, when you're putting your foot down to now not to be at their mercy or at their abuse, they will not like it. And that is why they will not like it. Because it's no longer at, you are no longer going to run things based on just what they themselves are benefiting from. So what I need you to understand, you're going to need to remove the emotional attachment from your clients that are not paying you. So you see, I want you, I'm, I'm going to share some experiences with you and I hope I'm going to let the spirit guide me of what it is, what is not. So just let me just be, okay? Mm. I needed to Please. start asking yourself, other than in your business, which other area are you letting people just walk all over you? Because how you are in the boardroom is also how you are everywhere else in your life. Mm. I need you to start looking back in the mirror. When did this start? And how mm -hmm. long it has been going on? Because you're gonna find that the reason why you are making these decisions that are not at your advantage is because maybe at home you have um, what I call um, a firstborn syndrome or a baby girl syndrome. So a, first, a firstborn syndrome is when you take responsibility. Yeah, everyone. And you take that leadership role and you then become a mother to your siblings. Wow. <laughs> Middle child syndrome in my case. So may, there's a possibility that you have middle child syndrome because your firstborn did not take the lead mm. in your family. Then you took it. Or you are in the middle, because you're in the middle, you never get attention. So when you go to the boardroom, you are seeking for approval and attention. For the spirit to guide me of what is the what is where is the area is and some of the things that I'm touching I know seem as though they're getting too personal, but I want you to not take it uh, personally. Take it as it's just where what it is. And I, I said to you guys when uh, you started joining on the orientation, I am not here for you to like me. I'm not here for you to. To, to, to feel good about yourself. I'm here to wake up and, and tell you that you deserve better, you, you can do better, and it is possible what you want, but there's certain things that are gonna need to change for you get to get those things. And this is one of those things. Definitely. So I do not know which it is, my wife, my, my dear, but Ngiti, we really move. And you might even find you have translated that even to your, your personal relationship with your spouses or, or your, your closest uh, person and people. Maybe you're one of the people that even your friends, when they're broke, they call you, but when away, now when you're broke, nobody calls. You know, when you're saying, hey, actually, I'm, I don't have this, no one even uh, offer, you know. So, and I am saying how the market treats you is how you have treated yourself. And I realize this on my, and I'm, I'm sharing this because I've been there, I know. I went to the market 
Ginga, Beganga, Uguti. Who would I want to be my partner and why in terms of partnerships? I went to business without being clear. Who would I want to be my customer and why? And I have been in rooms. I do not deserve this after so many years of schooling. These rooms, these are not the rooms I belong to. But the reasons why I was in the wrong rooms was because I had never set specific standards of what is it that suits or precious? What is it that of course stands for? My power was just, I was just allowing any Tom and Dick and Harry to just call or say or do or, you know. Mm. But then when I started analyzing, why, why was I that way? Why was I that person who have done so much, but my veil was not recognized in the market? It was very clear. I didn't value myself. I didn't value what I was doing. No wonder then the market responded exactly the way I valued myself because whatever that you are experiencing on your, in your life is reflecting your beliefs that you have about your life. Oh. Okay. Okay. Now, boy to raise an issue which she has been little feeling a, bit, a little bit stuck. So when you're feeling stuck and you're having some stagnation, you're having a, a no growth area, yes, it is true. It's because you are not growing. However, the environment boy to Ogiona when also detects how far you can grow. It's almost like, like what Alan Musk said. He said, uh, to, to be rich, you're gonna get out of Pretoria, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, your environment detects, guys, I, I, I want you to understand that who you are and where you are at any stage in your life. Yes, it has to do with what you believe in, what you are doing every day. But I want to also say the environment that you are in detects what is possible and what is not possible. So boy, do if I were to find myself and I'm stuck, I'm not moving on areas, I will change. One of the things I will change in my life, if I was you, I will change the network. I will change the people that I communicate with on daily basis. That is the one area that I will change. Number two, I will also find myself looking at um, things, making, making a clarity, having a clarity, what are the things that are stopping me to achieve the goals that I have? You spoke of skill set, you spoke of um, people, uh, capacity, and so on. Um, then, which means then look at what skill set succeed in your area of work. And who has that? Can you call them? Can you make an appointment? Can you follow them on, on social media? Can you try to connect with them? Mm. And from that, and then boy to uzo busu determine. And also, and if you not to ends and jalo, do not discount what you have and what you have built. I needed mm. to really sit back and look at. What is it that you have built so far? Value it so that when you are meeting with others, you know what's your value, what's your worth. You can't go to the market and not know your value that you're bringing to the market. Now, let's talk about the failure. Let's talk about fear of not- Before you move on, this is fresh, sorry. Yes, doll, yes, doll, go ahead. Uh, on what you just touched on, right? So, um, I just want I just want to use your opinion rather. <laughs> so when you say look into the market, uh, I have done that. I actually um, met a, 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 another guy who's also in the same business, but what he does as well, he freelances. So unlike unlike most, because uh, I'm in the cake uh, uh, business, 
um, unlike most cake decorators uh, who are stationed in their businesses and would not, um, you know, go outside and start helping you or whatever at, at whatever rate. So I met this guy, he was doing some sugar art for me. And also he, he, he indicated that he, he freelances a lot with other bakers. So I would call him um, to come and assist, especially when the work is a lot. So where I found myself is that I have sent one of the ladies that I have, I've sent her on this training for cake, for cake decorating. And uh, she came back, she's still struggling. So I find myself in a position where by now, yes, there are other things that she does very well without me, but in this, in this space, which take, this is what now probably takes about 40%, if not 35, maybe 40% of you know, the, the actual business um, uh, output. And she struggles in that. And that has led me now to going out and getting the services of this guy who actually charges per cake when he touches it and wants to decorate it. But I also found myself having a little bit of resistance because um, I hear what you're saying to find myself and, and, and not and not let that go, irrespective of who comes and I partner with or who comes and, work, and works with me. So I found that he's also in a space where he's running his own business, you know, and, and the clash is, uh, I want things done with my taste. I want things that, yes, you're covering my cakes uh, that are getting out of my business, but can we do it my way instead of your way? Because I don't want my cakes looking like your cakes and there's no difference. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. So I found that there was a little bit of that struggle where should I put this guy in, on a full-time basis or not because of that struggle. So maybe okay. if you can, but yeah. Then the, the issue here has nothing to do with the arrangement. It has to do with, are you comfortable to tell him that? I have. Does I have. He, and, but, does, does, he, does he understand that? Um, to a point, because I, I remember we had like an, it was not an argument to say, but it was, can you do it this way? This is how I want it. Because there, there are certain things that I want the cakes to, you know, to look like at the end. You might, somebody might have touched it, but so I want So why can't to, you then still make him to be your core person, but still he were almost like, so this is how I understand about cake business. There's certain things that your, your, your lady can do at the office, but there's certain things that he can then do. So instead of him doing everything, so maybe the, your lady can do the basic, covering the cake with the ice, and then this guy doesn't do the decoration of that. So, and the decoration is the drawings, it's your drawings and your notes, how you want those things to be done. But you also then need to make sure because you see baking uh, and, and, and designing, it's, a, it's almost like a baking is a science. So you're gonna be very prescriptive thereof of what needs to be mixed and how. So your recipes and so on. And that should be your trademark. And you should also, um, you should also make sure that he cannot pursue your clients. Uh, so make sure that there is, um, the arrangement that you have with him that he cannot actually poach your clients. So make sure that contract is in place. But I'm of a view that the fears that you have um, are your intuition telling you all the things that could go wrong, but address those issues face on and have a way also if those are not getting addressed, a consequence of not those matters going through and move on, maybe find another one, find two or three in, in that space so that you can alternate instead of depending on one person. Yeah. Okay, um, so there was another issue guys that I now say I'm calling. Oh, there was another issue that I wanted to address. Sometimes we go to business without knowing who we are as individuals. 
because we don't know who we are as individual, we see ourselves only in respect of what we do. We don't see ourselves as respected as a human being. We then miss the plot. So when I said, when you then go to the market, know your value. I don't just mean a value to precious we see a precious he has more than 20 years in business. That is not precious. I'm talking about your value is what you stand for. Your 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 compassionate. I'm talking about your resistance, your your I mean your 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 your, your personality that has a value. Because you see, when you know who you are and what you stand for, it doesn't matter who comes. You could have the president right in front of you telling you something. And if you know who you are, you will tell that president or whoever that person is what you think and what you believe. You should never be in relationships where you cannot say what you think and believe because it's already putting you in a, in a begging position than in an empowering position. Yes, Ogar. Yes, Precious, yes. very loud and clear. Yes, <laughs> so got you. Loud and clear, loud and clear. <laughs> okay. So Uncomfortable, me... but very true. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was uh, not my mandate. <laughs> that was not my mandate. My mandate was I, whatever it takes, I'm going to do whatever it takes to help you think differently, for you to do things differently, but for you to never be the same. That was the mandate, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Stick with that mandate. And as I've said, before, I sometimes make a grown man cry and grown women cry. <laughs> yeah, he just made me cry. Oh, <laughs> you see, that is why I still want to do the physical uh, sessions because I can <laughs> see that. At least I can do it. And you know no, that you can't see me. me. <laughs> but thank you. I, I needed love this. You. All my heart, all. All of it, it comes from a place because I've been there. So, and, and I think yeah. that is why also, and I've been there and I've gone through it even with other people who have been there too, that because we, we choose and go to these businesses with a whole lot of baggage, you know? Guys, yeah. I, I, I'm on Twitter. I prefer Twitter than other social media. So I'm on Twitter mainly most of the time. And, this uh, lady uh, or guy just shared that uh, they have been in hospital for more than a month and uh, she normally sent money home and they knew that she was in hospital and it's now month end, they are sending an SMS saying, Ima like again, you know? And I mean, my heart just like, Fell, and I just and I know what that means. It's because when people see you, they're no longer seeing you; they're seeing the money. But that sort of abuse, we then take it even to our personal relationship. We'll look for spouses that are gonna have emotion that we're gonna have that emotional dependence, that fatherly role because we didn't get that uh, assurance from the people who are supposed to give us assurance. We then go to the boardroom and not say things the way we see them because somehow we want an approval. And sometimes it's approval even, and that is why sometimes black people accept crap when it's just pure crap, whatever that is. You know, we, we are not calling it what it is. We, we run away from calling it what it is because we're afraid of some emotion or that person not feeling okay, but then we bruise ourselves in that process. Then we we'll, we are at the loss. Um, it's almost like a, a, a standard uh, until you have watched the the YouTube uh, uh, thing where uh, a tailor was a was a checkers. You tell us a pick and pay. You tell us a wallet. Have you seen that uh, <laughs> that YouTube clip? <laughs> 
have you guys seen it? <laughs> you you're still oh, buying it? Haven't. You haven't? No, not no, you guys should check it out. Go to YouTube and just say uh, and tell us to check us and all it. He it it just portrays that for some reason we have um, accepted standards in certain places to be in a certain way. And we allow this sort of abuse even in places where we shouldn't have not. But it scattered small. It's almost like it builds up over time, but then it ends up creating the brand. And, um, and then you end up even losing who, you're, who you are as a person. So, and that is important. And I think uh, for me, uh, I, I realized quite late that Actually, I needed to know who I am and be comfortable in my own skin, who I am and what I stand for and be fine with it. And, and for a very long time, I was made to be in platforms and I, I withdrew from those platforms because somehow I felt incompetent to be in those positions. But I then also discounted my value when I do that. So as a result, then I never achieve the success and the things that I deserve because of that. But no one did that to me. I allowed myself to do that. So one of the things also, I, I mean, uh, I, I grew up rural. Uh, I went to um, a high school that was not Model C. So I've always known that because my English, you know, Betty, I go, going to school, Benny goes to school. That's me. I literally self-taught myself English. So when I was at varsity, when I was on places where I needed to voice my views and even take up certain leadership role, I always felt incompetent because I was like, yo, it's in case and cause I'm cause of a joke figure gamma and guys with things all pronounced like a teen or say, you know. <laughs> and and for a very long time, until I think it was 2018, or yeah, I mean just recently, not even, yeah, 2018 or 2015, I got coached by Ubu and I don't know if you guys know him, just Google him. I got coached by him and he said, you know, Precious, the stuff that you are fearing or the stuff that you are saying, I don't even see it when you're speaking to me in English. I'm like, okay, I, I, I literally have thought you went to Model C, but that self uh, uh, confidence, that lack of self-confidence, self-esteem self has then stopped you to pursue things that you should have pursued, to do the things that you should have done. Because I literally used to see and watch uh, people speaking in platforms. And I will say, that is wrong. That is not how it is. And then, but I wouldn't be able to go to those platforms and say that because I'm afraid that I'm, I'm not gonna say something in the correct order in terms of English. And then when Upoti Pili Selegane was coaching me, he said, have you actually ever thought what maybe you not able to speak the language that way will then be how people also will see you and identify with what it wouldn't, don't you think that will simplify it to others more simply a way when you can be able to translate it in Sizun or whatever case it may be. You know, I mean, he, show, he, 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 he just showed me a perspective that I had not thought about. He also said, Precious, when you were at Vasid and the key, other kids were getting results, wasn't your name also on the list of those that passed? And actually I was like, I even have a Dean's recommendation. So mm, I had, consistently had thought in my head that because my English was so broken, it's a self-taught English, I will, it, it, I, I will seem as though I'm stupid because somehow when, when Model C kids were around me, it made me feel I was not as smart. You know, so 
language and the smartness has nothing to do with the other. But do you understand what I'm saying? I'm sharing this experience so that you can somehow see how we self-sabotage ourselves about things that we cannot change about ourselves. I cannot I'm change. Oh, I'm glad we are there. <laughs> I cannot change. I cannot change that I didn't go to Model C school. I self taught myself. Actually, it's a privilege. My children, they go to Model C school. They correct me literally every day. No, mommy, that's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm fine with that because I came to a realization that me mispronouncing English word or, or, or not putting the certain words in, in a pre exitives or whatever case it may be, does not mean I cannot analyze, does not mean I cannot reason, does not mean I cannot come with uh, different plans and strategies. It just means I don't have the right words to express it. I do not have the right words to express it. And that is why you sometimes I go to uh, meetings or things and then you hear people but when you start listening to what they are saying, it's crap. Right? And, and, and that's a problem. We got it. And that is why it's important for us look into mirror and accept what it is and what is not and, and, and come to realization after you've pulled all those layers, who are you and what do you stand for? And how do you pursue what you stand for? How do you stand by what you stand for? What you believe in? And, and I'm stripping these pillars and say, I, I've done it in a personal life. I'm doing it also in just professionally, but I, I can make a lot of other different examples where I'm saying, we are not doing what it takes because we have stopped ourselves because of where we come from. That is why environment also detects to your success, but you're gonna face what it is and what is not. And, and then also build yourself up and be confident with it. Guys, I will go to a board meeting. I chair quite few uh, meetings and I will be sitting in rooms, hey guys, rooms that are so big that I can't even see the last person on the chair. If I'm analyzing something and it's only Zulu word that is coming in my head, Gyalish, because it happens. I, in other instances, I will even run in meeting in Zulu. My brain, the way it's working, it takes a while, guys, to translate from, because I think in Zulu and then it has to be translated in English, even though I will be reading English. And guys, I'm sharing that as just one snippet, but there is other things. You gotta need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what is stopping me to be who I need to be, to be in places I need to be? And for me, it was the language. For me, that language then stripped away my confidence. That language then told me that, oh, versus I was speaking more sense. Half of the time I would be saying, oh, versus I was in mind. You know, <laughs> but because the way you speak, but actually that's not, I only found out later that actually he doesn't even speak like this normally. He has a stage uh, voice versus his normal voice. <laughs> oh Lord God, help us. So you better need to know who you are. And it has nothing to do with what you do. It has to do with the core of you, what you stand for. And I'm making, these examples so that you guys understand what I'm talking about. Is that clear? So the work you're gonna to need to do is to go back to the drawing board, ask yourself, what is stopping me? And the stuff that is stopping me, is it really a thing that I can do something about? Is it something that I can change? Is it something that just empowers me or is it something that is empowering me? And if it's something that is just empowering me and I cannot do anything about it, can I live with it? Like me living with the fact that there are days where it will only just assume that will just drop somewhere in the middle of the sentence. And that I'm fine with. But I also got to 
be fine with it. When I traveled to the UN, I was in the UN uh, and I saw how the, the world operates, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> we're going around with a French lady, uh, we're talking and chatting and, and excited about what, what we're going to be doing and stuff. And it, consistently she would drop a, a French word. I'm like, <laughs> that all crap. And I realized if I had been exposed to that when I was, what, 18, 17, oh Lord, I can imagine where I would have been. Uh, I also realized that even, I started even noticing, it's the same thing when we're around Africans people. They will just uh, drop Africans words from now and attempt and again, and, or their English will be so broken. You're like, okay, <laughs> what's happening, <laughs> you know? And that's okay. It does not mean you're less intelligent. So I am saying to you, the prison that you had created or that has been created by the environment that gave you certain things, feedback that was, that meant you were not smart enough or that meant you are not good enough, you're gonna need to get yourself out of that prison. The things that are stopping you, you're gonna need to look inside yourself and take yourself out of it. Sometimes it might be a process Sometimes it might be just snapping out of it, um, but you, it's gonna be the work you gotta need to do. You do not have a choice. You gotta need to do that, that work. And because only until you have done that work, you can then be the best you can be. Now, I wanna go back to some of the issues on the, how many of you, um, having uh, partners, shareholders, and directors. I do. Angus? Lindeline, you, you're saying you do have uh, partners and shareholders. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, directors, actually. Directors, okay, yeah. no problem. So. Directors, uh, Linda Lani, uh, they are not shareholders, they're just directors. Yeah, yeah, I do believe that they are shareholders because one of the incubators now that we are. Yeah, in. the fact that you're saying you do believe I'm more in <laughs> front of the bus. <laughs> you're yes, supposed I to do. know who's your guy, who's your shareholder. <laughs> Actually, actually, Precious, I wanted to actually come to that point. I think it was raised by Boy Um that in um, general, I told her about the being a director and the Uber shareholder. Uh, we are incubated by the Innovation Hub here in Pretoria. So one of our mentors, Use uh, Aranbeck, she called us and said to, it was me and the white guy who were both part, we are both partners. Then he, she said to us, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a lawyer, but she is dealing with these shareholding stuff as well. She said to us, you guys have to go out, spend some time maybe in a hotel or guest house for three days and study. Um, the shareholding principles, <laughs> because Mina, I thought that <laughs> I thought it would it's just the sharing the certificates and then you say you got so many. <laughs> I can tell you, precious. <clears throat> we went there, uh, but we did not finish the document, <laughs> even after three days. Because there were a lot of things that we didn't know, like for instance, to say, if the company has got about 100 billion and uh, you are 10 as shareholders and you decide to retire, where do, or maybe someone dies, where do those shares of the person who's a deceased goes to? Do they go to the beneficiary or do they go to the company? 
we didn't know about those things to say you yeah. have to <laughs> so 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 i learned a lot in such a way that it is more bigger than just being sharing certificates to say this is how much you because remember we are building from startup commercialization to corporate here so at at a level of corporate then we need to understand how these things work so so i believe is because before i did not know that um in the by shareholding it, it's so deep in such a way that you need to understand just more than just sharing certificates and mm. a, a, a percentage yeah we are immortal in the land and this this i've been talking about for the past what almost the 10 years now oh lord okay guys you gotta need to have a shelter's agreement. But you take a MOI, you make sure that the details that is under MOI is exactly what is sitting on your shoulders agreement. And on your shoulders agreement, you're gonna need to make sure you have an exit strategy clause that allow when the member exit, where those those shares go. But number two, when they, they, are, they are deceased or incapacitated, what happens? You also need to make sure that the shareholder has a will that has the same wording as what is sitting on your shoulders agreement, because you don't want to have a will superseding the shoulders agreement because of the timelines. Now, in the shoulders agreement, you also need to make sure that, okay, first, you, you gotta need to make sure the stuff that you guys are agreeing on does not also supersede what is sitting on the company's act. Because if it then, then supersede what is on company's act, then it's invalid. It will not stand the test of court. Now, for directors, you need to have a contractual arrangement. There must be deliverables. But you also need to make sure that the deliverables are aligned in terms of the, the work that needs to be done. And how you structure the work that needs to be done has to be categorized into these three areas. So, and if the, the current directors and shareholders do not have experience or are in these areas, then they shouldn't even be part of this. Actually, they should only just be shareholding, but not necessary directors. Understand a person who's a direct has to be at a position of management and, and have a skill and experience to do any of these. Depending on the size and the needs of your business, you will then decide how you prioritize. I also needed to really uh, understand that um, you, the, the, the contribution really depends on, um, the contribution really depends on the nature of the business and the business model that you have actually set up. Not all businesses will need a CA, not all businesses will need a lawyer, not all businesses will need an architect and so on. It's really, you're gonna need to go to, on a drawing board and say, I want this success. I want to run this. I want to have 500 million revenue per month uh, in my business, whatever business that I'm running. But then go back and say, what skill set is required to run a 500 million business or so 500,000 uh, business? And what experience is required? What capital is required? And then go to the market and look for that. Now, some of us, we also go to the market and look for 500 million, but we don't look like a 500 million. It means that inside of you, you see yourself running the 500 million business, but how you present yourself is not 500 million. So when I talk about presentation, I'm not just taking, the, I'm not talking just the look, that is one part of it. I'm talking about what you speak, what you do and how you do what you do. 
So I need you to really um, uh, 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 have a different view on how you approach this. Spelele, the stuff that we are talking about, it is on the notes that you have received, module three, um, where the directorship, but it's also even on the book, the roles of the directors and what decision get made and so on. Um, and I also just wanna say that a shareholder is a, a owner of the business, is the investor. He gets rewarded through dividends, whereas a director gets rewarded on salary or director's fees. And these are different. They have different roles and the shareholder appoints the directors. Okay, the shareholder appoints the directors, but the directors that get appointed must suit the business model and the skills and the requirements of to achieve the things that you wanna achieve. So a, a shareholder is basically like a founder. So please let's have that. And then I'm gonna cover something before uh, we're supposed to finish what uh, we're finishing at in 30 minutes time because it's two hours. So, okay, let me just wanna cover another issue. Okay. Um, um, about people, um, oh, it was someone, uh, I think it was, um, about uh, a person growing faster than the business. Uh, it's Dr. Julia. Yes, so it, it then means the goals that you have set for yourself are not stretched enough. They are not big enough. They are not too big. You gotta need to set the goals that are just scares the heck out of you. Like you literally jump out of bed <laughs> when you think about them. So and then you then they that creates a space to then grow. If the industry, how the in industry progresses also is slow because maybe it's a legislative environment uh, or it's just difficult, then look at innovation. What can you innovate in your industry? If the innovation based on the environment or where you are is also not progressing as fast, then connect with partners overseas, connect with people in other countries. Um, um so Kasha, sorry, can I interject quickly? Yes. I was saying I'm growing at a faster pace in the in the in the organization, meaning that my employees are also falling behind. So they're not growing as much as I'm growing. I'm I'm in the construction industry, I'm doing big things in the construction industry. I'm I'm already working with um, the regulator, the CIDB, public work. So I'm doing, I'm, I'm involved in terms of women. So it's more of your and, staff. And just, it's more of your staff. It's Maybe, more of my staff. Yes. yes. So then if it's more on your staff, then you need to ask yourself, when you recruit, how are you recruiting? Are you recruiting employees that are going to be loyal and stay in doing the same job or are you recruiting for growth? Recruiting for growth, you focus on attitude than the current skills. Does that make sense, Ms. June? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Perfect. So that is one area. But also police. Do policies in your organization push people to actually perform and excel to a point that the, every two years, there has to be someone who get promoted and move from one position to another. And you can put that even on, on your police. Uh, but do you also have personal development plans for each of your team members? What are the things that they need to work on? 
um, and they are also people that want to learn and read and understand and study so that they can grow with you. And that's, those are the areas then, Ms. Julia, you're gonna need to work on. <laughs> can I, I don't mean to have a dialogue. Can I come in? Yes, please. Um, th th thank you so much. And I think um, what you said is, is, very, is very crucial. And I, I and I know that um, in the in the day and age where we live in, um, it's it's very important that we recruit on the basis of attitude because attitude is is really everything. And um, you find that this are people that you probably either started the business with um, or they joined you a few years um, uh, um, after you've started the business, but they are so rigid and so stereotyped um you know they don't want to adapt they're not agile they don't move with the time mm -hmm. um you know and, and that that becomes a bit of a challenge particularly with um people mm -hmm. at certain um levels where they get comfortable mm -hmm. they are so um content with um, where they are. I mean, even when so which yeah. then means yeah. the problem is more on your recruitment, but mm -hmm. also it's more on your succession planning, your own exit strategy uh, in terms of how you're going to build the business, your growth plan now on building the business. But you, 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 you cannot fool yourself when those in, there are individuals that they'll be comfortable in one area. It then mm -hmm. means as you are recruiting, you're gonna to need to bring a new blood that then allows you to have a mixture of the two. Every business does not need a mixture of the two. A person who will do the, exactly the same thing the same way, and the person who's gonna be agile enough to grow with the business and change. So it's just that you're gonna to need to figure out which positions need that agile uh, uh, response and, which, and at what level and then which ones you are fine with them remaining static. You, yeah. No, because I-, I Thank I you so like much for that advice. Yeah. <laughs> I, also I think feel like, this July, someone is also yeah. taking the notes. <laughs> yeah. No, I also feel like I've been in the same boat. Um, you know what I mentioned the lady that she even went for training. So I felt, I'm, I'm kind of stuck where I am to say, okay, I saw the gaps. Then I, I, I thought, let me just take it for training to a different person who will train it differently. Um, but we're still stuck on the same thing. I don't know. Um, I, I, like, I, I can't even figure out like what's the problem at this stage because everything else you can do, but, but that part. But now that you're saying it, let me look at you know, the bigger growth strategy of it. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Look at the bigger picture. Because it was just picture. frustrating me. Honestly. Yeah. There, there's nothing you can do about those people. They are actually good. It's just that they are good to a certain extent. You want stability. You want to work with the same person that you're not going to repeat yourself over and over. But you're then going to ask yourself, should something happen to that person, what will happen in my business? Then now talks to the succession planning. Okay. Okay, let me use the last 30 minutes. There is other issues that I wanted to bring on board. Okay, can we reflect on what I've said? I know I have, um, how can I say, <laughs> ruffled some feathers. <laughs> But let's reflect. Um, I will start with uh, Spelele and then I'll move to Pamela. Go ahead. Uh, no, uh, my hand is, has been lowered, I'm covered, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, no, 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 but is anything that you wanna reflect? What did you learn about the things that I've said? I know that's oh. not on the on the material, but it's the, <laughs> it's the most important part. <laughs> uh, I I wanted to um, well uh, the stuff that that resonates with me 
is the fact that you, you are saying that uh, you know the, the thing of wanting or, or, or wanting to have a, a company that commands uh, 500 million uh, revenue but you you don't uh, make the effort to match up to that and people don't see that you are that kind of person um it's been said quite a quite a few times that um initially when the business starts out you are the business you are the person that sells the business uh, so if you are submitting documentation um that that uh, that give one impression and then when they see you in person they find they see another a different impression then there's no correlation between the two um so now you know when you are touching on the the other things about childhood uh discovering yourself who you really are and um and all of those things those also resonate with me because it's taken it, it, it takes it, it growing up and evolving is a it's a lifetime process you know uh, you've also mentioned about your own personal experiences and things that you've had to overcome over the years. Uh, <clears throat> we are all we are all evolving for as long as we are intentional about growing and the the life lessons and and uh, I said this to another friend of mine, Uguti. If you are not learning the lesson quick enough, you are going to fall into the same problem again and again until you learn the lesson. So. I, I appreciate the platform. I think um, I, I also want next time to be better prepared in terms of uh, very specific uh, uh, questions in terms of um, in the next session that we'll have. And I also hope by then I would have made some, some progress in terms of what I am planning. But I do want to specifically say to you, um, Sis Presha Soguti, um, there, there doesn't have to be a conflict of interest per se. Um, it's maybe just a matter of. Uh, <laughs> there, there doesn't have to be a, a, a conflict of interest. I think uh, it's a matter of um, just understanding where up to which part can you assist and up to which part you can't and whatever binds you to so such that there's no so that you don't overstep in terms of information that you share but but this is but it's tricky to say then that there's conflict because now it means you've got another investment elsewhere that may um uh, you know i i i don't want to to meddle with other people's ideas, but I do want assistance in terms of the fact that I'm bringing a whole entity this side in Richards Bay. <laughs> this is precious. Are you raising a hand, serious? Or um, I'm bringing people this side. So of course I will need advice in terms of um, you know how to how to 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 to, to structure myself such that. I give them the best post. They're already very impressed with what I've done in terms of the, the land application process and things that I've done without you know, uh, their assistance. But I want to, and they are convinced that I'm a viable partner. But I want to, when, when I sit down with them, I want to um, bring a very strong impression to so, such that they understand what yes, I may have nothing, but the, the potential is so huge um uh, that i'm i'm a viable business partner so basically uh, that's what i'm saying uh, because and and say because there's a conflict then we you know then i'm going to be um restricted in terms of the assistance i get we, we must just think creatively around it thank you I, uh, you have put a, a really good case. I can see why in the boardroom you can get people to, to agree with you. Uh, I No problem. Maybe touch base with Denise. Let's see how we can share the notes. <laughs> Pamela. Hey, <laughs> Don. Checking out. We're Thank checking you. out now. What have we learned? What are we doing? How are we going to move on from where we are? 
Thanks, Precious. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, just um, I'm so glad that you let the, the, the spirit guide you. You know, the direction you went is exactly what uh, I needed to ask myself is what is holding me back? You know, and I started thinking, Yazi, uh, I left corporate about three years ago and it was uh, to focus on my business. And I think only until six months ago, when I did not imagine my boss calling me, like saying, no, come back to work. I still had those fears that um, I might still have to go back to corporate. I might still have to go back, you know? It, it, it's taken me this long to have the confidence to say, I am actually doing this, you know? And, and the clients are giving me the feedback to say, you are doing this, but the person who needs that, um, that, that confirmation is me. I need, to give myself um, that confidence. So, but you are doing this. You really are doing this. Now, have that confidence to go after bigger and better um, opportunities. And um, so I'm glad that this wasn't just about um, Companies Act and, and, and that it became personal. I'm glad you asked those difficult questions. We would see, we do have those syndromes. Those, I'm a firstborn, so I am very much uh, a caretaker. And I do let people um, take advantage, you know, and because for the life of me, I know I'm supposed to be increasing my prices annually, but I have that fear. What is my client going, going to say? What if my client is not happy? But I should at least bring up the, the, the question so that we can have the discussion, you know? And they did sign, a, when I took them on board, a contracts to say that there will be an annual increase. But I'm the one who's afraid. Again, it goes back to that confidence. It goes back to uh, issues that I have about myself. So thank you. I'm enjoying this. Uh, one other thing. Um, you did mention the possibility of face-to-face -face, uh, group sessions like this. I would definitely try to do that if, if that's an option. <laughs> it would, I think it would be great to meet everybody. YouTube is so lovely. Asia, mm -hmm. we, we have it national, so we're throughout South Africa, but I really want to do a physical uh, and mm -hmm. visit each province because I do miss having a session face to face because it, it had uh, at least also the, the connection. Because you remember mm -hmm. there's communication that you see in your face, then you know yes. what to say, how to say. And that is why it's difficult for me when I'm speaking and I'm saying, just allow the spirit because you see, if I was face to face, I would be able to know how far I can push. You understand what I mean? But push, we, precious. Push, <laughs> push. We need the push. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you for that permission. Uh, Zaziwe? We are checking in. What did we learn? What are we going to implement? What are your reflections about today? Uh, having a reception problem. Um, but besides that, I have personally learned about the importance of understanding who you are. And I'm in that verge of self-discovery. I'd like to believe I know what I bring into the table, but then you hit home when you said to me, how you present yourself in the boardroom is how you are everywhere else. So as I had said uh, before, I treat myself as an entity and I could not help but look at how I present myself the time I was an employee. So it's important to rebrand myself. That's what I've taken with me. And um, I really love how you emphasized the imposter syndrome you used to have. Uh, and, and, and if Kosa comes in or any mother tongue comes in, rather express yourself, you know. And I'm learning so much from other people's um, learnings as well. So I was looking forward actually in, on touching on the assignment. <laughs> because oh, so shame. Always, yes let's use the five ten minutes to go through the amazing. assignment great yes perfect yes because i only had an issue with 
one question and I asked myself, is it a trick question? <laughs> but then <laughs> no. it was actually the first question and then the rest I managed. Bye. Okay, perfect. Um, Moakhi, closing remarks before we do the assignment. Okay. Um, so with me, <laughs> it was when you said, uh, start looking in the mirror. Mm. Um, how long have you been letting things, um, people uh, go through past you and neglecting you and not like actually focusing mm. on what you initially started, which is the business and how you run it. Don't let people run your business for you. Stand firm. Um, I'm just going to go back and reflect and look in the mirror and see how I can actually improve myself. And you made me cry. Stop. Thankfully, <laughs> no one can see me. And being a middle child, um, having middle child syndromes, <laughs> and I really, really appreciate you using also your, your experiences. And you said this is also how you used to view yourself and how you treated yourself, but you, you improved and you, you learned. And thank you. We learned from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And lots of love. Um, Lindelani, and then uh, Sis Julia, and then we'll end with Tumi. Lindelani? Hi, Sis. Yeah, I wouldn't even fund it in Amshanji. That's Uma Ukuluma Wuti, Uma facilitator, Uma Kolu Tola, it can be right. <laughs> but what I've realized, Uguti, uh, <clears throat> there is a, a gentleman, or I think it's a protocol analyst, something like that, uh, over Mokuluma because FM. Uguti, Yazi, Ipoloti, Olimiluako. Now, I feel like converting that into business and say, yes, it business mm. because uh, you you confident language. Mm. As long as Lento Ekulumayo is correct, we don't have to be fancy, mm. but we have to be professional in doing things in Angela. So that has just restored my confidence. I remember I facilitate e-commerce workshops a lot sometimes. And, um, and, and, and it happens a lot, Uti. You end up trying to impress by bringing smart words instead of saying it as it is. Yeah. And uh, and 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 uh, uh, is like we are we are trying to impress somebody by it's making the sure ego. It's the ego, my brother, oh, that has not been checked. you're trying to protect yourself because you want the approval. Yeah, about the born. Yes, Lindelano, yes, Gitimina E. Congoba, you're trying to protect yourself, but you also want the approval. Yeah. One and make sure that we are actually uh, improving the way we do business uh, going forward. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. I got disconnected a bit with the network, but I think it's all fine because we are recording. Miss Julia, please come through. Thank you so much, Ms. Precious. Um, it has been a very enlightening um, session, very insightful. Um, I think the best teacher really is experience. Um, you know, the theory is just created for us to get the fundamental and the basics, but uh, this for me has really been um, very insightful. 
Um, I want to thank you. I think one um, last thing that stood out for me was um, when he says that the world sees you the way you see yourself. Um, you know, in order for you to dress uh, for success um, or, or, or actually um, externalize it, it's got to start from um, internally. It's got to start internally, rather. Um, you know, it's got to start with you. It's how you see yourself, how you view yourself, and so on and so forth. So I, I think it, it, that just, you know, it's an interesting <laughs> um, a matter that you, you really um, dealt, I, I, I think, with me, um, even as, a, as, a, as, a, as an individual. So I uh, thank you so much for the, um, ex, for the wealth of experience. Um, that um, you're sharing with us. I truly appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, few minutes on the assignment. Stolen booze munch, all right? <laughs> okay, we have just 12 questions. Are you able to see my screen? Uh, yes. Great. Number one, what's the answer? B. Okay, so the answer here is B. B and C. Okay. It uh, is, a, is a minor that is not yet emancipated. Okay. Great. Number two, what's the answer? A. 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 Yes. A. Number three. <laughs> that was C. D. Okay, there's a C and B. Answer is B. Number four. C. 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 Hey, where are we for? B. Oh, yeah. Oh, number four. Oh, four, sorry. Okay. Four is C. Thank you. Only registered entities can charge and pave it. Okay. And then number five. B. B. Thank you. You guys we have been studying. <laughs> six. <laughs> Number six. A. 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 Great. A indeed. Seven. B. B. Yes. Good job. I don't know what's the problem. <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> C. C. So this yeah, one, C. the answer is C because you're paying everything, uh, but yeah. it's allocated in different ports, but it's then submitted in one return. Great job. Number nine? A. 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 Great. Mm -hmm. You see, Ben <laughs> Lale <laughs> IT 14R. B. C. 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 So this is done mm -hmm. annually. E e mm -hmm. by annually C and the RP6. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is annually. Number 11. A. a. Yes, it's A annually. And number 12. A. 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 a yes. C. I don't, I don't, you see, I think people in Dubai service call, school, it's calling. <laughs> <laughs> you are taught at school and then it just, when there's an assignment, you're like, oh, no, another test. <laughs> oh, beloved, thank you so much for the time. And thank you so much for opening up your hearts and, um, and let the spirit lead wherever it's supposed to go and deal with what is there. Uh, God is love. All we do is for that. And um, I really truly believe if we have all entrepreneurs that have experienced certain things, they will share them uh, to other entrepreneurs so that we do not repeat the same mistakes. There is progress. I wish what I've shared with you also gives you some sort of a, a pattern of saying that I also too have a responsibility to share my experiences because only through our experiences as a country we can progress, but we're not gonna progress if 
we're repeating each other's mistakes. Uh, generation after generation of entrepreneurs will continue digging our hole uh, and without understanding these things and then also succeeding in these things. Success will then seem as though it was designed for the few, whereas it is reachable to all of us and it is possible to all of us. Whether you have gone to school or you have not gone to school, that's not the point. You see, that is why I love business. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter what a certificate you have on the world. It means nothing. Entrepreneurship is about understanding who you are, what you stand for, and waking up every day being excited uh, in working towards that dream. And it is about living in that dream. And thank you so much. Have a great evening. Uh, I will save these recordings. This is session two for those of you guys, if you want to go back. Remember, sessions are going to be different from one place. So maybe it might be nice even to hear what happened in another group. But the, 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 the table of content of what we are covering is exactly the same. Thank you so much. Goodbye for now. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, my Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.